What up guys, Kaka Captain G -G Gamester coming straight at you and I'm excited to talk about a forgotten hidden gem that actually many people might not have even ever heard of and it's coming straight on the 3DS exclusive digital shop exclusive nonetheless which means you got to download it so hurry up and get it because who knows how much longer it's going to be up online in the 3DS eShop. Now this game is called Attack of the Friday Monsters coming at you and it's a great game. It's a pretty short game. I did recently complete it. You can finish it in about eight hours on average and that's completing everything. It's a very charming game. Now you're playing this little kid, this little dude and his name is Sota in Japan in a prefecture and what's happening is every Friday night mysteriously some gigantic kaiju monster appears in and around town. Now you must be thinking, what crazy, and it is, but it's also very fantastical, whimsical, and it's a touching tale of family and friendship. Very heartwarming. And of course, a boy's, a young boy's self-discovery on his journey. It's really fun. It's very reminiscent of a traditional, you know, JRPG kind of Pokemon-esque, but it's not the same kind of combat system. It's actually all role-playing for the most part, so don't expect a lot of like you know, different kind of battles and stuff like that and monsters or anything like that. It's more of a, you know, experience and a journey of this young kid going around town, talking to people, interacting with objects, looking for stuff. And basically it's broken down into these episodes, kind of like a cartoon series where you have to, you know, reach a certain goal, like talk to somebody, find someone, discover clues, unravel the next chapter and the mystery and what's going on and stuff to figure out where these monsters come from. There is a cool and fun battling mechanic aspect in the form of a card game for those of you who like Magic the Gathering, again, Pokemon. But it's not a complicated game like those by any means. It's more or less a paper, rock, scissors, and, uh, you know, kind of like number power battle game, like whose card has more power and stuff like that. And it's very simple. I'm not going to explain it here. I don't want to spoil it too much. I want you guys to play the game. But know that there is a bit of strategy and, and, you know, I'll go into it a little bit. You know, it's definitely luck, but there's also some strategy in there. But, you know what, you guys got to play this game. We're going to take a closer look at it. I do like showing my custom 3DS here. We're going to take a closer look at it. I'll just show you not very long, but just a few segments of gameplay, how it all kind of works and stuff. But again, I 100% recommend this. You guys got to play it. It's charming. It's fun. The only people that might not enjoy it is if you really want to play something super action, shooting, beat them up and all that kind of stuff. But if you want to appreciate a story, see what it's like for a young kid kind of growing up in the retro times, again with these gigantic monsters and it kind of captures that Saturday morning cartoon feel and just go on this journey. You get to explore Japan. So you kind of feels like you're there. Like when you role play this, you really feel like you're this young kid living in a prefecture in Japan whose parents, they own a kind of little laundry home business shop and everything. So you get to get a feel of that kind of lifestyle, slice of life, making friends with, you know, the people or your, you know, your friends and stuff, meeting the other kids around the town, your, your little area. But again, it is charming. Give it a go, guys. You got to play this 3DS exclusive. I'm still a 3DS fan. Nintendo for show. All right, guys, let's take a quick look. And here we go, playing it on my little customized 3DS. I'm excited to share this game with you guys. Let's take a look-see here. Attack of the Fr Fr Friday Monsters, a Tokyo Tale. And this has been published by one of my favorite Japanese studios, Level 5. Take a look at their list of games that they've made. I'm sure you'll recognize quite a few. I've played a bunch of them. So I really, really, really enjoy their releases, which is also what got me intrigued. And I was like, this game hasn't even really been, you know, marketed that much. Here's the introduction. You can pause it if you want to read it. Kind of sets the tone of the backstory. And you can tell that the creator of this game was really someone who enjoyed kaiju growing up. And I know that was a big part of Japanese culture. You know, now we've recently gotten it, you know, with things like Pacific Rim. And of course, Godzilla keeps coming into play. Uh, I seen Ultraman growing up, you know, Power Rangers kind of fits that. Same thing with things like Voltron. And recently I've been into K -K Combatler Bay. All right, let's jump into this game. Now, you can see the backgrounds, you know, they're 3D, but you can't move them around. But you walk around and interact with people and things in the environment. Right now, I'm going to show you guys the basics of the card game. So what you want to do here is you take a look at your collection. 
I only got six cards, but I've gotten multiples of them, which you combine into making them more powerful, right? So the power is the number, which you can see on each card. And then it also has either a rock, paper, or a scissor. So this is basically a rock, paper, scissors game. But if your card value is higher than the other card value of your opponent, in case of a tie, then you would win. See, so I have an eight, you know, uh, rock, as you can see. And I got like the nine, you know, another nine. And then essentially it's all luck when you put it down in the beginning, right? How you want to distribute. Obviously you maybe want to do a nice variety or, you know, put your most powerful cards down. And then you get one little bit of, you know, insight, knowledge, and strategy here. It tells you that you're winning currently, you know, which, you know, three out of the two in my case, and then I'm losing the two over there. So now you get a chance to swap two cards. So with that little bit of information, you can definitely make a choice here that will change the outcome of the game. And then your computer opponent, your AI opponent, is also going to do the same. So again, it's a rock, paper, scissors game. But there's a little bit of strategy involved for sure. Now, this is the basis of the action of the game, because like I said, this game is not a beat em up, shoot em up or anything like that. It is a poetic, whimsical, metaphorical, just fun and enjoyable game that you go and explore. Again, you role play the character, you meet and interact with people, and you also explore your environment. And it's all done with the A button, very simple. So here we go, I ended up winning the game, Gia! And sometimes you get rewards. And I did, I got another Glim. You don't always get rewards from people, but sometimes you do. And that's why you want to keep challenging people. And what those Glims do is, you see I got a yellow sparkle over the blue. When you complete that lineup, you get all the yellow sparkles, you get a new card of that monster you're collecting. And basically what's happening here is part of the story. I'm not going to go into that about casting the spell and all that stuff. But it's a little bit of an inside joke for the characters. So that's kind of what you're doing to progress. You want to collect glims. There's like several different of the kaiju monsters. When you collect enough to make a set card, you get that card. Whenever you get another of those cards with the values, you can combine and power them up. And you need to beat and defeat other people in the card game to progress and unlock parts of the story. And as you can see here, you can go inside certain buildings, like I said, and you can also interact with things. You just walk up to them and press A because you might find hidden clues or items or even glims to complete your cards. Very beautiful. I love the setting of this. Again, it, it's just very nostalgic. It screams like Japanese prefecture, what it's like to be in Japan as a young boy growing up. And, you know, the 3D in this game, too, is phenomenal. Again, I will always say in every review how much I appreciate the 3D capability. As simple and rudimentary as it is, I think it's such an integral part of the experience. And it, to me, made the 3DS such a wonderful system to have owned and purchased and to continue to play. All right, guys, again, I highly recommend this game. Get it? Yeah. All right, thanks for joining me, guys. Again, check out this game, buy it, pick it up, play it, beat it, complete it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. What were some of your favorite parts and stuff like that? But maybe give a spoiler warning if you're going to do that. Otherwise, guys, thanks for hanging out with Captain Gamesta and the super fun force. I'll be coming back at you. Peace.